Hey everybody, this is Jim. Welcome to Song Tripping again. Today I want to talk to you about an album called Procol Harum Live in Concert with the Edmonton Symphony Orchestra. This is an album that came out in 1972 and I'm going to be reviewing the Esoteric Recordings CD reissue of this album. Here it is. It comes in a uh, one CD pack with a very nice booklet and uh, I think you're, you're gonna really like this review. Let's talk a little bit about pop music and classical music. Is it possible for classical music to mix well with with pop music? Maybe that question is moot by now but way back in the 1960s and 70s, the notion was somewhat controversial. You can hear the snobs sneering. Just what did these long-haired interlopers with their guitar amps and drum sets think they were doing? Did they seriously think they could pretentiously employ serious musicians for their popular ditties and get away with it? Wasn't rock music the domain for pinheads and knuckle-draggers? It took years for rock musicians to establish credibility and be seen as something other than great pretenders. The Beatles had a lot to do with effecting a change in attitudes, surely. Other pop artists helped to bridge the space between rock band and orchestra as well. Think of the Moody Blues, Love, Deep Purple, the Bee Gees, just to name a few. They were all dabbling with orchestras in live performance and recordings in the late 60s into the early 70s. Which brings us to the subject of our story, this album, Procol Harum Live in Concert with the Edmonton Symphony Orchestra. came out in 1972. If any band seemed suited for orchestral accompaniment, it would be Procol Harum, wouldn't it? Their melange of classical, gothic, blues, psychedelia, and rock positioned them squarely on the emerging progressive rock art rock spectrum. We used to call this kind of music head music, as in feed your head with something more ambitious and ambiguous. Take band lyricist Keith Reed. The band had their own writer, just writer of lyrics, Keith Reed. He wrote head-scratcher lines you could think about, mull over, interpret. And Gary Brooker, the band's leader, piano player, main songwriter, he was devising arrangements that melded classical harmonic development with grooves you could really dig into and get dirty with. Everybody recognizes Prokel's most famous song, A Whiter Shade of Pale, a tune so gigantically popular that it dwarfed the rest of their recorded output. Sadly so, because so many listeners don't realize how many rewarding musical gems they're missing out on. This was a band that was really consistent over a good decade's worth of uh, album work. So, over the past many years, Esoteric Recordings on the Cherry Red UK label has been reissuing the band's back catalog in extended CD packs. These are remastered albums with heaps of bonus tracks and live sets, sometimes with posters, amply illustrated booklets with informative essays and liner notes. They've really done themselves proud with these reissues. And all the ones I've encountered so far uh, have been excellent. I've lost count on how many times Procol Harum's albums have been reissued on CD and vinyl. I mean, they're the original A&M and Chrysalis originals, followed by reissues on labels like Mobile Fidelity. They did a few Procol albums, Salvo, Friday Music, now Esoteric. I might even be missing some labels. Although I already have a complete run of their work on vinyl and on CD, after Gary Brooker passed earlier this year, I realized it was time to pay tribute and resupply the Procol Harum cash with these new reissues on Esoteric. So out the wallet came. 
By 1972, Procol Harum was a band in transition. Original lead guitarist Robin Trower had recently departed the group. Organist Matthew Fisher, who also did some composition and production work for them, he had left the band in 1969. Then they switched labels from A&M to Chrysalis. And the Edmonton Symphony album seems to have been a stopgap release while the band reconfigured. I always kind of thought of it that way. Uh, you can find full de details and release history on Discogs. Uh, I'll share a link in the show description. Now, often I tend to dismiss live albums as being second fiddle releases to the more interesting studio albums produced by bands that I love, like Procol Harum. So it came as a bit of a surprise to me while reading the uh, excellent liner notes uh, in this booklet uh, by Roland Clare to find out that the, the live in concert with the Edmonton Symphony Orchestra album was no throwaway. It actually did quite well on the charts. It was very respectable. It has some notoriety as being the first rock album recorded with a symphony orchestra to go gold. Now, I'm assuming that they're not counting the Moody Blues Days of Future Past, which surely must have gone gold, but maybe that doesn't count in the calculation because the orchestral arrangements on that album were, were overdubs. Uh, they kind of layered in, um, whereas this album was recorded together with the orchestra. This album, the one you're looking at on album cam here, would be Procol Harum's highest charting U.S. album release. It peaked at number five on the U.S. charts. And the single Conquistador, let me, let me jump over here and uh, flip it around for you so you can maybe get a, a peek at the back cover. Uh, Conquistador... Uh, that peaked at number 16 on the U.S. charts and it reached number one in Canada. Basically, if you remove a whiter shade of pale from the equation, live in concert with the Edmonton Symphony Orchestra is probably what most listeners in North America are familiar with when they think of Procol Harum. So this live album could have been a mess. And as the liner notes point out, it almost was. Like we said at the time, classical music and rock music were improbable marriage partners. A discerning listener to this album will detect some tense moments in the performance. Technically, the concert recording was a difficult feat to pull off in terms of staging and sound monitoring. And with the band up front, let me flip back to the front cover. You see the, this, this cover illustration really mimics the way it looked on stage. Um, the, the band was up front, the orchestra and the choir were above and behind the rock band, and drummer B.J. Wilson actually relied on mirrors so that he could see the conductor. And uh, it was, you know, there was a lot going on on stage. Rehearsals were hasty, they were somewhat uncertain, and that's evident in some of the bonus tracks on, on the CD. You get a few bonus tracks here. You get Luscus Delph, which is a B-side of a single Conquistador, Conquistador, which was released in 1972. And then uh, Simple Sister, Shine On Brightly, A Salty Dog, and Luscus Delph. Uh, the last two there, A Salty Dog and Luscus Delph, were rehearsal uh, recordings that managed to survive. But there is some uncertainty in there. And uh, the liner notes um, are really excellent at filling in the backstory of how all this went down. But the end product is really cohesive and thoroughly successful, especially on tracks like Conquistador and the epic length sagas Wailing Stories and In Held Twas I. The orchestra comes together. The choir sounds enthusiastic. There's a kind of sweet innocence to it as if everyone agreed to give it a try and see if it worked, and it did. One final remark here about the cover art, uh, which I love, by the way. When you think of how pompous and pretentious the cover could have been, uh, Bruce Meek's hand-drawn color image comes across as a relief. It's a honey-warm, 
charming, witty invitation to sit back and enjoy this artistic experiment where pop music meets classical. It suggests, let's not take ourselves too seriously here. Um, I really highly recommend this album. Listening to the remaster, which I thought was just excellent, excellent. I really feel like I'm in the concert hall. I feel like uh, I can I can hear that acoustic soundstage, the enthusiasm of the audience, the kinetic energy of the musicians as they attempt to pull together. I've, I've enjoyed the occasional listen to this vinyl album. I've had it for years, but I don't think I've ever enjoyed this particular album as much as I did until hearing it on the esoteric CD version. So that's my quick take on uh, Provol Harem Live, the concert with the Edmonton Symphony Orchestra and the Da Camera Singers recorded in Edmonton, Canada. Um, check it out if you want to hear some vintage Procol Harum and those esoteric CDs are certainly worth picking up. Thanks for watching Song Tripping. I hope you subscribe, hit the notification bell, and leave a comment. Tell me what you think of this album. Bye-bye. See you again soon.